Today I'm working on the pistons and um, what I've done, I haven't showed you, unfortunately I thought I was recording and I wasn't, uh, is putting these piston rings on. Um, now there's, there's three effective, well I say three, there is three rings, there's this the oil ring and then there's this darker one that goes on top of that and then the, the shiny one on top of that. And these are all come in a kit, they come complete with the gudgeon pin uh, as well. Um, which bizarrely it doesn't come with the two springs which I thought it would done they have to be bought separately but anyway I've got all the parts to assemble it now um, putting these rings on is fairly straightforward the bottom bit here um, if I can focus that properly doesn't seem to want to focus so to put these rings on what I did was I put um, this crinkly bit in first um, making sure that it doesn't overlap that just they just touch and then at the bottom is a little metal ring that's really thin that you can slide up from the bottom I drop the top one down on top of that and that locks that into place then the next ring uh, goes on and you've just got to be careful and just spread them slightly they do have a, a gap in them as you can see there um, and uh, they just just ease them over now you've probably seen all the manuals how to do it they do some shims you put some thin bits of metal on, I didn't bother, I've done it so many times before, I've never had to use that and that's going to just basically uh, slide on. What you've got to make sure when you install them though is that these two sort of gaps don't line up, you don't want them, they've got to be about 30 degrees they reckon away from each other. So that's that bit, um, that then will go onto the engine and as, I see, as you can see I've put lots of rags around here so that I don't drop those little springs off into the engine, that would be a disaster. So that's going to go on there. The first thing I'm going to do though is install one of the springs. Now you can see here on top of the piston crown that it actually says inlet, inlet or in. So that means that that goes to the back of the way I'm working here. So for ease I'm going to put one of them little clips in there first pop that on and then put the other little clip on the other side. So already installed the clip, little spring clip in the piston ready to put this one in and I've oiled the gudgeon pin up so this is the last one she blows. I'm not sure if you can see this clearly or not but on these uh, pistons where the little rings go in it says that they must go completely past the uh, screwdriver so get in focus there if you can see that it must go past the little ring must go past this slot here so you can't have the two ends there and it's just a case of pushing it around I've just used a um, this little pointer and it's just just slid them around they're fairly easy to do just make sure that those pins are all in the right place those little clips these little rings that go in here um, you must get the ring the circlip to actually go past this hole so you don't want the two ends either side of this screwdriver bit it's quite adamant in the manual as you can see mine aren't and what I've done is I've just pushed them round with a little screwdriver and it means that the ends of the rings go fully past this hole here the last thing you want to do is have uh, uh, well you can see where the two ends are there so that one goes past I'm actually going to push this one further round for me this is the worst bit now replacing the barrels um, I've only broke ever in my life one piston ring but it's such a bitch if it does get broken um, the gasket's in place now these barrels on this Honda um, do have a very severe taper on them um, which is a good thing because it means that when you're putting the rings in they actually sort of like squeeze automatically Two schools of thought. Some people say they like ring compressors. I've never been able to uh, use them properly. They just never seem to work for me. So I always just fiddle it with my fingers. It's fiddly, um, but it can be done, and especially with a big taper like this on here. So that's just going to get a final clean and oil, and then on go these barrels. 
the first thing to do is to put these oil seals on in position. I've oiled them, so they're nice and oily, and they're going to go into position on here and fit down into these grooves like that. So I'm going to do the inner ones first. Right, those two pistons are at top dead. So here we go. Wish me luck. Seated nicely. Well, that was relatively painless. This is one of the oil breathers. Um, needs a little gasket on it. That's that one that's been lubed. So that little oil seal goes on there. That fits in the top of the engine with a corresponding one on the other side. Pin down, and in that goes. On the cylinder head gasket, there's this little hole here which uh, designates the left hand side of the engine, um, which is that side. You can notice the right from here. Ha -ha. As you can see I've now put the head on top um, of the barrels. Um, I was going to show you how to put all the, the valves in but when the uh, head came back from the blasters he had all the components. He was going to do some uh, mending on a couple of these studs that were broken which he mended. He also mended one of the, one of the fins um, and he put some new inserts into the spark plug um, parts here, those inserts there because they're both shredded but what he also did was he rebuilt the head for me so I can't show you how that's done but um, a couple of things to, to note on here first of all the uh, cam chain tensioner just here um, which goes underneath there and that pushes down into the bottom of the block and at the bottom, this is the old U-bend at the bottom uh, it pushes into that hold and that is quite tight in there so it's important that that does engage into that hole um, I know this is not exactly the right part but um, you can imagine how it goes and that goes into there and needs to be fully engaged and clip in um, and to do that on the back here I actually had to go in I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, almost certainly won't be able to but you can actually access it and get a screwdriver down on that component and push it into place so that's that's a good thing I've put all the uh, head bolts back in position 
um, the way they came out just to note that um, these domed ones go on the back here with the double height ones here um, and these also have a, a washer with a rubber seal in it whereas all of these ones actually um, are just copper washers and they're all now in place down in these spark plug recesses on the outside they don't have domed ones they have standard bolts uh, eight millimeter bolts I've actually used stainless um, because the other ones were absolutely shot when I took them out if you remember um, I had trouble getting them out and they're rusty and rounded so I've just put similar replacements in the next job is to um, torque down the head with a torque wrench and once that's done I'm then going to clamp them up and I'll get on with putting the uh, rocker assembly back together as well as you can see I've pulled up the chain here I've actually put a tie clip on there just to make it life easier if it does fall back down I can always grab it with that so um, talking up the head is the next thing I need to do